Hi everyone, I thought I'd do um, a video recording for this one. As I said, I have been reading The Wonder A Woman Keeps a Secret by Susanna St. Lever. About who most of you are probably saying, who on earth is she? Uh, the place from 1714, uh, you would call her a successor to Afra Ben. About the play, I would say she'd learnt a lot of lessons about making theatre popular from Afra Ben. 30, 40 years earlier. 30, 40 years, 74. Yes, yes, easily, easily. 30, 40 years earlier. Um, it would be much easier to play than some of Afro Ben's scripts, which are. I love Afro Ben, but you know, it has to be said, a lot of the plays are patchy. Whereas you couldn't say that about this. She, Susanna St. Lever has definitely concentrated on comedy um, and technique for putting a show together. With this one as well, you get um, a, a good example of what I would call a more realistic portrayal of female friendship. You often find them in restoration comedy where the two, it's always two, two heroines very often who are helping one another and, oh, I'm your friend, you're my friend. Oh, but what are we going to do? And there's a lot of that in it, but these two have real agency. So Violante and Isabella have some agency here. It appears that they haven't. Isabella's going to be married off by her father. Just let me check who her father is. Um, Don Lopez. <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? Yes, to an old man because he wants to get his hands on the old man's money. And she doesn't want to, of course. So far, so typical. Violante's father is sending her to uh, a convent, but he hasn't told her. He's told her that um, her grandfather left her money on the condition that she could only have it if she went into a convent. But her father knows that there's a, there's actually um, a, a, a clause in the will that says that she can have it when she gets married. Doesn't bother telling her that one. So neither of the girls are very happy. They take some agency in what they're doing. All right, so that sounds a bit restrictive, the usual, oh, two girls under pressure. But it is a comedy, you know, so we do know this is going to end happily in the end. Fortunately, there's lots of adventures going on. The men don't come out of it very well at all. The girls, in their own way, are, are, are sensible and powerful. Not, well, yeah, they're quite powerful, actually, for 1714. You know, which is maybe wishful thinking, I don't know, for then. It was how St. Neva wished it could be, although with her life was quite adventurous, so she took quite a lot of control herself, much as Afra Ben did before, and uh, various others, uh, Mary Manley, uh, Mary Picks, Mary's about. But the men, yes, they are the ones with the faults here. Whereas very often in a certainly a lot of the early Restoration comedies, the women are shown as being faulty or fickle or um, certainly having some kind of, of weakness. Here, neither of the girls is given a weakness, nor the maid is given a weakness. Either There's always a maid involved, Flora in this case. Always clever machination. She, there's an appreciation in this play that the actresses at this point are good at their comedy. You can tell by the script, the way it's written, that it wouldn't be written for people who didn't know what they were doing. So she was writing for people she knew could deliver comedy, character comedy and, um, yeah, gags a bit. Not exactly gags, but certainly humour, shall we say. Uh, the men. Well, cheating men. Don Pedro. Yes. Yeah. Once wants his daughter's money. Felix. Jealous. So jealous. Doesn't want her to be jealous of him, but he can't help himself. But then he can't help himself either, threatening all the time. He doesn't threaten, uh, he sort of threatens violence, but not really, thank goodness. Um, which would probably, which happens elsewhere. I mean, country wife, uh, I mean, pinch wife offers horrendous violence to his wife in that. So we don't have that kind of uh, distastefulness. Maybe at 1714 as well, like early 18th century, things had calmed down a bit. They didn't like as much violence on stage unless it was in their uh, tragedy. Um, Colonel Britton, yeah, Chancellor. He is the sort of character that's a, a refinement of Wilmore from Afro Ben's The Rover. He's come from Britain, looking for adventure, 
looking to get his leg over as they so often are and gets falls in love and gets pulled into matrimony but he doesn't that's not necessarily what he's always looking for but he does in the end because he realizes God, she's gorgeous. I've fallen for her. Unlike Wilmore, though, he has a lot of money. He's a catch. He's not just a handsome rogue. He's got money as well. So the girls fall on their feet. And of course, at the end of it, we get all this, the usual, everybody lives happily ever after. Everybody gets married. Even a maid that we've barely seen gets married to the, the token funny character, who in this case happens to be a Scotsman. Making fun of accents, it goes back a long way. It's like he's actually a strong character, but also something of a caricature. But I think there's a leeway within the script for that not to necessarily be the case. That depends on the actor. Uh, I mean, the accent, as long as it's not sent up, the whole thing about not understanding can be played in a comedy way without making anybody look stupid. Because he's not treated mostly, he's not. There is there is a mention of people not being able to understand him, but a lot of the other characters can. So again, he's not he's not a butt of the joke, and he ends up getting married to Ines for no readily apparent reason. Because I don't think, from what I remember in the script, that they ever meet. It's a good popular comedy. I can see why it was in rep for years. It is. I wouldn't say a roaring crowd pleaser. It's one you would say, oh, that was a laugh at the end of the evening. It's definitely that that kind of a play. It has issues in that make you think as well. And as I say, I like the fact it's the women who have the agency that aren't at fault. Whereas so often in Restoration, the women are just portrayed as weak. Well, it's like the whole title is just a complete irony, isn't it? The wonder a woman keeps a secret. That's got to be tongue in cheek on Susanna's part. But it's typical of the thinking that was going on then. You know, and in terms of comedy, and you've got to look at it in terms of comedy, you can explore the themes and the attitudes. Yes, that's a very intellectual thing to do. And the performance of it would make you do some of that in the audience but mainly it's it's there to entertain and I would say does the job quite well without really offending certainly I'll be interested to see it now with a, a group of modern actors involved getting that together good comedy actors people with decent technique but also sensible heads you know that will avoid any pitfalls that are there though as I say I don't think there are a huge amount of pitfalls there Stand to be corrected if anybody else has read it. Um, I would say get out there, get a copy of it, get a copy of St. Lever or a few verses, things like The Busy Body. Um, oh, what's the one about catching a wife? Forgotten the title of that one. You know, she wrote some good plays that probably should be back in classical repertoire. If I'm being honest, if I'm being honest, I am being honest. They should be back in classical repertoire because there's good parts for everybody involved. You know, it's really decent roles for actors to get their teeth into, but also that require technique. Besides comedy technique, bit of slapstick here and there as well. Lots of physical comedy. Yeah, it should be back in the repertoire. <laughs>